This facility contains some of the greatest evils ever collected in one place. This bacteria causes the plague. Your flesh dies and rots while you are still alive. The Black Death of the 14th century killed a quarter of Europe's population. And then there's tuberculosis, a slow and deadly killer. The creator of oozing lung abscesses. The poet Keats, all three Bronte sisters and Chopin are a few of its more artistic victims. And this is gangrene, caused by any number of bacterial infections that lurk unseen in every dirty bullet scalpel and delivery wood. Some bacteria don't need a wound to get inside you. They're already there, waiting patiently. Patiently for our defenses to drop, and then they pounce. That's probably what did for George Washington. But Washington's doctors would have laughed if you had told them that microscopic life was killing him. They still clung to theories passed down from the ancient Greeks. They believed that if you had a disease, the humors were out of balance. If you had a fever, you were considered to have an excess of the blood humor. Well, you were flushed after all. So, why did it change? How did we track down, trap, destroy, and isolate our enemies? During the second half of the 19th century, two European scientists were going to throw light on how an invisible world of microbes might be making us ill, an idea called germ theory. <laughs> 